Two in St. Mary Bar attacks succumbed to injuries. The police are reporting that two of the four men who were shot and injured during a gun attack at the bar in Dover's district in St. Mary have died. The deceased are 40 year old Damon Melvin of Windsor Castle, Portland, and 34 year old Leroy Mandran of the community. According to police reports, about 7 10 p.m., Melvin Morand and two other men were outside a bar in Dover district when they were approached by two gunmen. The armed men reported the open fire injuring all four men before fleeing the scene. The police were alerted and arrived to find the victims with gunshot wounds. The injured men were taken to hospital, where Melvin and Morand were pronounced dead. One man was admitted for treatment, while the fourth man received treatment and was later released. The police are urging anyone with information to contact them at 876-996-2244, call Crime Stop at 311 or the Police 119 emergency number. Exotic dancer killed in Mandeville identified. A woman who was gunned down in Mandeville on Saturday morning has been identified. Relatives named her as Desisha Farner, otherwise called Drama, a resident of Burnt Savannah in St. Elizabeth. Farner was reportedly an exotic dancer. Preliminary reports are that about 6 a.m., the police were called to a service station on Main Street where the woman's body was found face down. The ear was cornered off. Police still arrived that a woman and a man were walking from a nightclub when upon reaching the service station they were attacked and shot. The injured man sustained gunshot wounds to his upper body. Police still rise that the man was the target of the attack as he was also shot during a shooting incident in 2022 in Greenville. Two men were killed in that incident. I am fine. Pastor who collapsed at policeman's funeral was overcome with grief. Pastor Paul Norman who collapsed while preaching at Saturday's funeral for Constable Richard of Flaircloth in St. Anne, says he is home and doing well. The service was held at the Ochoa's Baptist Church. Norman, a pastor of the Kingdom Lighthouse Apostolate Ministries International, says he was overwhelmed with grief. I was okay until I started to sing the song, What a Day That Will Be, and the overwhelming reality of the loss struck my mind and I lost consciousness. I recovered shortly after. I felt better before I left the church building, he said. He added, the Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF medical team said that I was okay, but then suggested that I visit a doctor. The doctor's report stated that I am fine, and it's just that I was overcome by a sudden rush of grief. Members of the congregation were visibly worried as the incident brought an abrupt end to service. Norman started to stumble while delivering his message. He was whisked away by the JCF medical team for treatment. In the meantime, Norman has remembered Constable Fairclough as an amazing person. He was a kingdom builder. He was attentive to the various aspects of the ministry he shared. So many of us have voiced notes of encouragement and inspiration and prayers from him. He would call persons who attend Kingdom Lighthouse and pray for them over the phone. He loved to pray and would spend hours in his car under a cherry tree at church, praying or inside the tabernacle all by himself praying. Constable Fairclough, 45, was shot dead in St. Anne in April as he assisted a woman who was being robbed. Videographer accused of raping teen he reported a met on Instagram. A videographer who reportedly met up with a teenager he met on Instagram and then allegedly raped her has been charged in relation to the incident. The incident is said to have occurred in Brownstone, St. Anne on Tuesday, June 4. The police have charged 26 year old Change Thomas of Philadelphia Brownstone in the parish with rape and abduction. Reports were that the complainant and Thomas have been communicating via Instagram since May 15, 2024. It is alleged that upon meeting, Thomas forced the teen to a bridge and assaulted her. He was subsequently charged after being pointed out by the complainant and a statement given. Westmoreland Higler charged with murder A Higler from Westmoreland who allegedly stabbed another during an altercation along Nogaton Main Road, resulting in the man's death, has been charged with murder. Charged is 32-year-old John I. Beckford of the community. The deceased has not yet been identified. According to the police, on Wednesday, June 5th, around 8 p.m., Beckford and another man got into an altercation which escalated. It is alleged that during the fight, Beckford used a knife to inflict several wounds on the man's upper and lower body. The man was rushed to the nearest health facility where he was pronounced dead. 
The police said Beckford subsequently surrendered to the station on Friday, June 7 and was officially charged. Man charged with murder of three-year-old had a history of mental illness and assault. Devon Williams, the 33-year-old laborer from Page, who was charged with the murder of three-year-old Asher Campbell and wounding six other persons on May 29, has reported he had previous legal troubles with similar offenses in the United States since 2018. Williams was first diagnosed with a mental illness in 2017 after being admitted to hospital with a stab wound to the head. Scans confirmed that he was missing brain material. According to a psychologist who testified in his 2019 case, Dr. Andrew, Williams became delusional, behaving as if he was a prophet and that God spoke directly to him. The doctor stated that Williams was also diagnosed with cannabis use disorder and schizophrenia, which resulted in hallucination, delusions, and false beliefs. Although he was hospitalized and received medication, Williams reportedly stopped taking it. In 2017, Williams was found not guilty of assaulting another inmate at the Hamden County Correctional Center. He had reportedly become delusional, believing that the inmate was part of the Mexican cartel sent to jail to harm him. The judge ordered Williams to be sent to the Bridgewater State Hospital for a month. Williams' family is said to have reached out to the Springfield District Court in September 2018 and obtained a judge order for him to receive psychiatric evaluation. His mother was concerned that her son would hurt someone if not hospitalized. Williams had left Hampton and Springfield and moved to Brooklyn, New York before reportedly attacking four persons on September 9, 2018. The doctor testified that Williams' mother has contacted the crisis team of the State Department of Mental Health when William's symptoms increased to a frightening level. They had done the best she could to get her son emergency intervention, the doctor told the court. The psychiatrist stated that the family saw the storm approaching. Assistant District Attorney James agreed with William's mother that she had done her best to get her son emergency interventions. The storm that the family saw on the horizon came when William's attack a 55-year-old man at a casino in Springfield. He was charged with armed assault and battery with a dangerous weapon, shot foot, causing serious bodily injury and assault. He also randomly assaulted four men, three of whom were in Springfield on September 9, 2018. The psychiatrist testified that Williams was paranoid and believed he had a divine purpose to save individuals from a sex trafficking ring. He attacked random people based on what he thought he saw on their faces. Williams thought he was running around the city saving people. On Thursday, June 6, following an ID parade, Williams was charged with murder, three counts of wounding with intent, and six counts of wounding. Cabinet to approve $250 million contract for a new bridge in Spring Village, St. Catherine. Cabinet is set to approve a $250 million contract on Monday to construct a new bridge in Spring Village, St. Catherine, Prime Minister Andrew Holness announced during a visit to the community on Friday. Porter Producers, the Jamaica Burlers JB Group, which operates a plant in the area, is contributing $50 million towards the project. Noting that we have taken two years to get to this point, Holness emphasized that financing from public funds have to go through several phases prior to approval to ensure that all expenditures are accounted for. He assured, however, that in another of couple days, Cabinet will approve funding for the construction of the new bridge in Spring Village. The new bridge will replace the existing structure, which was closed by the National Works Agency NWA in September 2022, following assessments which determined that the structure was severely compromised and posed a danger to motorists and other users. Prime Minister Holness, who was accompanied by a member of Parliament for St. Catherine Southwestern, Everett Warmington, and JB executives, said while the closure posed an inconvenience to users, redesigning the bridge was imperative based on recommendations. He indicated that the replacement agreed on will be a durable structure capable of withstanding factories association with extensive use of motorists and other commuters and weather-related incidents such as heavy rains. Holness also thanked the Jamaica Brothers Group for being a very good cooperative citizen in partnership with the government to have this very important piece of infrastructure built. Meanwhile, Warmington advised that plans for the next bridge construction are advanced and urged patients by persons who will use it Adding that, shortly, work will commence and we will have a very solid and permanent bridge. Please remember to subscribe, like, share and click the notification bell for daily updates.